Alright guys, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to create a GUI for the inputs because as it is, it's a very inefficient way of inputting the colors on the Rubik's Cube. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start a new project. This is going to be a whole different class. So it's going to be Cube GUI Input. Alright, and what we're going to be doing is obviously I have to bring over a bunch of imports so I'm just going to copy it over from the file that I already have and I'll get started so basically we're going to create a bunch of fields now if you don't know what fields are it's basically variables that are initialized outside of the any method is just available to the whole class and can be changed by the whole class so I'm just going to pull in all the fields that I have and I'll explain to you what each of them do. Now, if I run the program that I have, it'll show you exactly what it I'll show you exactly what it does. It basically brings up this window and you can change the colors. Each time you click on it, it changes the colors. And you can click next to change the sides. You see sides white, blue, yellow, orange, red, and so on. And when you're done, you click done and at that point we'll start solving the Rubik's Cube so in this video we're gonna make this GUI but now we're not gonna integrate it into our program yet so this video is just the GUI video alright so what we're gonna do now is go to the main method and make our window so if you know how to make GUIs and you know the variables that you need if you don't then just follow along copy the code and you'll get it eventually so I'm going to copy each of these and well I'm going to copy the whole thing from the finished program and I'll explain it. Oh, basically these these fields are basically all buttons, the next button, the done button, uh frames, labels. This is a label for what side it is. So the side is white, the side is green. This is the integer array for the cube colors. Uh, this is a integer for the side, so zero is green, and then blue was orange is five. Yep. All right. So in making the window, you can have the width and the height. The width is 350. The height is 208. The title of the window is uh, first window, but we'll change that to cube GUI. Cube input GUI. All right. Set size of the window is the variables width and then height, which are up here. Default close operation, what happens when you click the X button, it exits. Set window visibility to true, then set resizable to false. Alright, so that's in an editor fold. Of course, you guys already know that I love these editor folds, because you can just put it into there. And then we're going to add a, we're going to call a method called add stuff. And basically this is going to add everything to our, our, um, our window. So we already created it and now we're going to add everything. So first thing we have to do is we have to set the layout of the window to null. The reason why we're going to do that is because we're going to put the buttons in the place that we want to put it. We don't want the computer to do it for us because if we want to get this perfect sort of array of squares then we're going to have to do it ourselves. The computer won't do it for us and even if it does it'll get mixed up between which button is which. For instance I just clicked all of them in a snake pattern and you know exactly which one you clicked. However if you let the computer do that it's not going to do it right. So that's why I set the uh, layout to null. So we're just going to go panel dot set layout null. Alright, now as you can see um, the panel is right here. This is a new J panel that goes into a J frame and that's what we're editing. So this panel we're going to add the panel to the window. So window dot add panel like that. So basically if we were to look at it, 
If this whole NetBeans IDE was a window, this would be a panel. And so would this. The output would be a panel, this navigator would be a panel, and projects would be a panel. So that's what you're adding. Now after that, we can add the text uh, to tell the user what's going to be worked on. So just go side label dot set text. Uh, we're just going to set this text to be green because by default it's green. So we'll just say the side is green. All right, and we're going to set the location of it. So basically what the the um the coordinates go from right and then down. So when we set the location of the side panel, whoops, wrong place. Let's so go over here. Okay, so this is a label, and this is setting the location of it, setting the text, and this is adding it to the panel. So what we basically did was we added up the panel to the window, which is essentially adding this to the big window, and then we added the the uh, label to the panel. So if you look here, if we were to run this, you'd see that the text right here is the side is green, and if you run the other one, then you'd see that it's in the same place. Now the coordinates are 178, 20. So you're going 178 pixels that way, and then 20 pixels down, and then you're starting to write your text. So that's for the text. Now when we add all the buttons, we're gonna have that's gonna be. A headache if you don't know what you're doing. What I did was I drew this out on a piece of paper and I just kind of measured it with a ruler, one centimeters, ten pixels, whatever you need to uh, make it work, and this is what I got. So, panel dot add button zero, three, six, one, four, seven, two, five, eight, and then the next and the done button. If you run this, you can see it's populated with all the buttons. So, if I click button zero, it's, it should come out and output as I click button zero. Oh no, that's in the other one. So if I click button zero, it says you click the button zero. If I click button one, button two, button three, button four. But what I did was I did it in columns. So I did zero, three, and six. And then I did one, four, and then seven. And then I did two, five, and eight. The reason why it's easier to do this coordinate and then just drop it a certain number of pixels down and then drop it another certain number of pixels down and then just find this coordinate and then drop it down. I found that easier for me but it might be easier for you to do something else. So once you have the buttons added you can collapse that and this is where it gets fun because now you get to add action listeners. Action listeners basically say, if this happens, then do this. So if this button is clicked, then do a certain command. So this is changing the button, the colors of the buttons and stuff. Yeah. Um, so if you go here, button zero dot add action listener and new action listener, and then in parentheses, what happens? So public void action performed action event E, and then you get system dot out dot print and you click button zero, and then if side is zero equals five, then change the color and then change the side. So basically, what we're doing here is, if the side is green, then button dot set background color to green. Oh no, if the side is number five is orange, then change it to green. I kind of did this last first. So if the side is orange, then change it to green. If the sign is green, then change it to white. This if statement says if the side 
is a certain color then change it and then you set cube colors of that side or whatever side you're at at zero or at one or at two or whatever um, button you're clicking to whatever color it is so we remember green is zero white is one blue is two three is yellow four is orange and five is red so we do it like that um, so since it's added to the code we can just run it and you can see that it changes color and at this point it's also changing cube underscore colors which is the actual colors the array that we initialize right here that's going to be sent to the program to solve the Rubik's Cube for us. So look at the code and you'll be able to figure out what it does. If you're not sure what it does, then Oracle has good documentation on action listeners and YouTube also has videos. So these are all the action listeners for the buttons. And then we have to add an action listener for the next and the done button. Now, this is my first time working with GUIs, and to be honest, it is pretty weird. For instance, I can't figure out how to stop the program until it says, until the done button is clicked. So the way we're going to integrate it is we're going to move everything from the main method of the, the cube solver program into here, so that when you click the done button, done dot add action listener, and then action event E, which is left click, it runs the program instead of going back up to the main method. And next, basically what this does is this changes the side of the 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 value of side. So if side equals zero, then you change the side by adding one to it and then you say the side is white. Side label dot set text to white. So you can see this done here that if you click next it was zero, but now it's one because you see it says print it out, and um, it says side is white. If you click next again, the side is blue. Next again, the side is yellow. This is chopped off here because I didn't um, use enough um, area for the button. So if I look for the button, the next button. If I look for the next button, set bounds, this isn't enough, so I have to lengthen the 100. And I believe if I lengthen the 100, it'll work. So next, 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 and then it, it goes back to green because it says if side equals 5, then change side to 0, and then side label equals green. So technically, it is an infinite loop. And then down here, it just says print out the side. So that's basically the GUI. Again, the integration is going to come from when you click the done button so everything from the main method of the cube solver program is going to be in here and you guys should be able to understand this if not again Oracle documentation on YouTube and YouTube is what I use to make these programs so you should be able to use that easily and if you don't understand what fields are then you need to understand that in order to be able to use this Alright, I'll see you guys in the next video, which is going to be solving the entire white side. Should be out in a month. Thank you. Bye.